I'll never forget that day. It's changed our lives forever. An attack like this affects everyone in the family. I'm gonna ask you to look away. I love my hands but it hurts to pray. Isn't what I'd seen. The sky's not blue and the field's not green. green. We need change. The day I was stabbed, I had been out early watching the football with my dad. It was the day of our old fun game. We'd been at a pub channels watching the game. And then after the game, the football was finished, we decided to go to another pub, done it Glennon. Didn't seem to be any trouble or anything. That's the evening went on. It must have been about six o'clock. We decided to go and get something to eat, because we were kind of fed up by that time in the pub. So as I went outside, my mum had already arranged with my mum to pick us up, but it was supposed to be about seven. Because we were a bit earlier, I went out to phone her to see if she'd come get us at that time. Uh, when I went outside to use the phone, I seen like, a gang of boys coming across the road, covered up. I didn't really think too much about it, because I didn't think it had anything to do with me at that time. And started smashing the pub windows, just attacking anyone who was outside. It just so happens I was outside at that time. Um, I remember getting hit inside the face with something. And I turned around and got into like a kind of scuffle with whoever that was. I don't actually remember being stabbed, but I think I must have been stabbed at that point. Um, it wasn't really till after they had left that I felt a pain in my side. And I says to my dad that I think I've been stabbed. He had a look at it and I'd obviously been stabbed then. I went into the toilet then to try and get cleaned up a bit. I didn't, still didn't think it was as bad as what it was. I don't know if it was adrenaline or what. Um, and then it just started becoming like an excruciating pain. I couldn't really stand up anymore at that time. I was kind of folded over. I just remember sitting and the police coming, sitting outside the pub door. The police coming, what, putting that the foil, uh, a big jacket hanging on there. I walked down Chapel Road and when I turned the corner at the Dunty Glennon, um, I was just faced with a crowd. I saw a friend of my husband's and I said to him, have you seen Willie and Luke? And he just looked at me. And I, in hindsight, I know that he was in shock. I was aware of loads of broken glass. And I was kind of milling through the crowd. And then I saw another familiar face. And it was the face of um, a friend of my older son's. So I said to him, have you saw Willie and Luke? And he just looked at me and he had tears in his eyes. What I saw then, the image, was my husband and he was kind of unrecognisable to begin with because he was just covered in blood and he was kind of leaning over, which turned out to be my son. And then while he was saying, Luke's been stabbed, and that's when I realised the whole picture was Willie standing covered in blood, Luke sitting on a chair, um, covered in the aluminium foil and he was kind of in and out of consciousness 
remember I became quite hysterical and I was just shouting, where's the ambulance? And it's, it was like as if it was a scene from a film and I was in the film. It, it, was, it was surreal, actually. The attack happened so quickly, it, it, it kind of seems unreal in a sense. We're standing amongst a lot of people who are out using mobile phones, smoking, whatever, and it just a random attack happened. And you think, well, who's that aimed at? Is it somebody else? And then I got struck in the head. And you think, God, that, that's just, just anybody. There's no reason for this. And why is it happening? And then it became almost self-defence. The whole thing happened in space of four or five minutes. You didn't really get time to think of it, not even time to react or, or to look to see other people. In the space of four or, five, four or five minutes, it became from a quiet, everyday scene to a scene in Bedlam. The police were left with it because paramedics are busy doing other things and other emergency services are attending other incidents similar on a weekend day or, or a weekend night. Now, the people who are perpetrating that could have been in an arse situation and can't get these people's services. They want these people's services, but at the same time they're creating a lack of them or a, a shortage of them. They're bringing on grief, but they'll want it if I haven't done it. Western Martinshire, in terms of knife crime, it, it was just another statistic to me. As, a, as most people think, it's just a crime in your area, and it's just another thing that people are trying to do their best by, and most people don't realise how serious it is. I myself, personally, didn't realise how serious a knife attack could be. I think probably most people, it's just a knife, it's just a slash, it's just a cut. Only, t only when you see it, What's involved, to put it right, is ridiculous, to be honest, when there's no need for it. The way I feel about my attack is I'm just trying to forget about it and just try and get on my life. It's hard to forget about it every time you see your scars or whatever, so you're always reminded by it every day. So just try now in my life, if I can, to make people more aware of the dangers of knife crime or try and tell people or any, anybody I would know that may, would maybe carry one that they shouldn't be doing it and stop using knives or any uh, weapons. If I was faced with my attackers just now, I would ask them, A, is there any point to what you've done? B, did you think about what you were going to do? And C, did you think about the consequences? In a sense, what happened to me, could have happened to anyone, and why would you set out to put that on anyone? Seems, seems mindless, to be honest, mindless violence. You know, I actually feel nothing for the actual attackers. I don't know if that would have been different if, um, if he was fatally stabbed, but um, <clears throat> I just... It's just so senseless. I'd, all I could think about was, I gave birth to Luke. He was nurtured, he was cared for, he was, he was brought up really well. And it was just so senseless that someone wanted to do this to him. Police were fantastic, mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. They get bad press, they get bad Young people think they're picking on them. On that occasion, they were professional, they know exactly what they're doing. There were no issue about crime. They, they are more concerned than welfare. Crime and the solving the crime came in when the welfare was looked after. How has the knife attack affected our lives? 
I know it's an old cliche, but it's true, but it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And we were always a strong family, we are always a close family, but we just appreciate each other so much more and just appreciate life so much more. We have to be more aware and make everybody, especially young people, more aware of exactly what a knife can do or any implement similar to a knife. They have to realise the damage it can cause, what has to be repaired apart from the actual wound. I just feel very blessed that I didn't lose luck. Nine out of ten people that do carry a knife wouldn't, wouldn't normally use it anyway. So when they, if they do get faced with trouble or anything, then they just use it or lash out and use it. And then regret it. I feel really sad about people, about mothers like myself, who have lost their sons to knife crime because it's just so pointless.